Well, hello, hello. So today I am going to do a spring top 10 list for 2020 uh, because it is officially the fourth day of spring here in the Southern Hemisphere. And I know that I already did a spring video earlier this year because there were lots of Northern Hemisphere spring videos going out and I just thought I'd jump on the bandwagon because I couldn't think of anything else to do at the time. <laughs> uh, but now I sort of figured I might do my own actual spring list. But instead of just talking about my general spring favorites, what I wanna do today is talk about some fragrances that I want to wear more in springtime this year. Uh, it, mostly for the purpose of, you know, a lot of these are new fragrances in my collection from this year and I haven't really worn them that much. There is one that was from last year, but I, again, I haven't worn it very much. So these are the fragrances, these are the top 10 fragrances that I am hoping to wear more in springtime this year. I won't be going into too much detail about each, each fragrance because Quite frankly, I don't think I'm super familiar with some of these ones yet. So I don't think I can do a detailed review. Also, we won't have time. And also I can, I am planning to do more detailed reviews of each of these down the track. So let's just sit back and enjoy another list video, shall we? <laughs> so the first one on my list is Solar Blossom by Mizensia. Uh, this is a really, really beautiful orange blossom scent. Actually, you can see that I am already fairly familiar with this fragrance because I have worn it quite a bit, even over winter. This was one of my go-to happy fragrances during lockdown. So even when on really, really cold days, I would wear this fragrance because it would just make me feel so happy. And it it reminds me of Spain. Um, it reminds me of Sevilla. And I think that's what it is intended to remind you of. But in fact, that the fact that I was in Sevilla last year is all fresh in my memory still. So uh, that's why I really enjoyed wearing this over winter and during lockdown as my happy scent. But it is gonna be awesome to wear in springtime. I already know it. So expect this bottle to be severely dented come the end of spring, summer. The next one is uh, another one. This is, I, I've talked about this before actually, but this, um, this is La Chasse au Papillon by L'Artisan Parfumeur. This is a beautiful floral scent. The perfect for spring. It's kind of musky fresh as well. Oh, it's just really, really pretty. It's just a pretty floral scent and I'm really looking forward to wearing this more. Um, I also have <laughs> the body lotion for it and um, I really love this too. So uh, it, these two together, it just, this actually does work. I, I was skeptical about the whole body lotion thing or scented body lotion happen, helping to um, improve the longevity of fragrances, but that whole layering thing really does work, which really just gives me the excuse to buy more fragrance products. So the next one is Sampaquita by Ormond Jane. Of course, there's going to be an Ormond Jane on this list. What were you thinking? <laughs> so yeah, this is, um, this is based off the Sampaquita flower, which I think is the national flower for the Philippines otherwise known as jasmine. It's otherwise known as jasmine. This is a really beautiful tropical um, white floral scent and it's a bit soapy as well. It smells really clean and fresh and it's just really, really beautiful. So I am looking forward to wearing this one a lot more. The next one is also kind of a white floral. I guess you're expecting to see lots of white florals on this list because it is spring after all. Uh, this is Dragon Boat by Tion Reintel, uh, Natural Perfumes, TRNP. Uh, this is a really beautiful uh, green sort of white florally fragrance. I think it's a bit citrusy as well. 
and um, uh, it's but it also has kind of that vintage vibe that a lot of Tion Rheintal's fragrances have so it's good I'm I think I'm really going to enjoy this in I have I did actually wear this a little bit in winter I think you can even tell <laughs> I bought this earlier this year I think yeah this year this year I am thoroughly looking forward to wearing this in the warmer weather because I have a feeling that it's really going to sing in the warmer weather even though I enjoyed it in the colder weather but I have a feeling I'm going to like it even more once the weather warms up a little bit the next one is a really recent acquisition. I didn't buy this. Amazingly, this was gifted to me by my friend Yelena, who lives down in Melbourne. So she shipped this up to me because she had two bottles. Of it. She bought this for a friend and they didn't really like it. And she already has a bottle for herself. So she very, very generously and graciously donated the bottle to me. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you so much, Elena. Um, it is Sex and the Sea Neroli by Francesca Bianchi. So this now constitutes my very first full bottle of Francesca Bianchi in my collection. I'm very excited and I have already worn it. Oh, wow, this is so good. It's like a coconutty green floral bomb, really. It's and it's really, it's quite sweet as well, but I don't, I feel like it smells sweeter when I sniff it out of the bottle than when I actually put it on my skin. On my skin, I think I get much more of the green notes and the neroli. Um, oh yeah, it's fantastic. I'm so happy to have this. Anyway, I'm super, super excited to be wearing this and I'm sure it's going to be wonderful in the warmer weather. Again, I've worn it a few times on a couple of cooler days here. I mean, although it is warming up now, but it has still been quite cool and uh, it has performed beautifully. Uh, just amazing, amazing fragrance. The next one, no list would be complete without some kind of Chanel on the list. This is 1932. I only bought this recently. There have been so many mixed reviews about this. A lot of people didn't like it. Um, because they just thought it was boring or because they thought it didn't last long enough. And I also did see somebody talking about the story behind this fragrance and how it just didn't gel with them because uh, Chanel was a rags to riches story and this was created in as a tribute to their first, I think, diamond jewellery uh, release or something in 1932. And so they considered it to be a bit of an affront to the whole Chanel story and catering to rich people, I guess. But nevertheless, I like the fragrance. I really do like this fragrance. This is an aldehydic white floral fragrance. It is beautiful. I really like it. I don't think it's boring at all. Uh, I think it's very classy. I also think it lasts relatively long on me. But who cares? It smells amazing. I like how it smells, so I'm just gonna re-spritz it, basically. But I think I still good, get a good four or five hours out of this, so I have no complaints. I really enjoy this fragrance. The next two, in fact, are from the same house, so I might just present them together because I did buy them at exactly the same time. So the first one is Pivouin Printemps. I'm trying. Look, I gave it a go. <laughs> Piv one print temps. <laughs> um, obviously, this is just a really pretty light peony fragrance. Um, and I've really been enjoying it. After I got it, I wore it for about three days straight. I really, really enjoy it. So it's just pretty. There's really nothing groundbreaking about this fragrance, but it is like the perfect quintessential spring fragrance I think so I will be enjoying this uh, I did obviously only get the small bottle because wherever I can I buy small bottles and the other one is is Figue Ag Agrume or Agrume I don't know if you can see that sorry this is a beautiful fig fragrance it's very crisp very sharp very clean very green I'm a poet and didn't know it. Um, it's it's a really lovely, lovely fig fragrance. A bit different to the other fig fragrances that I have, like Premier Figuere by L'Artisan. 
um, quite different to that one. That one is a lot softer and a bit more earthier. And I feel like I get more elements of the rest of the tree in that. I feel like that's more photorealistic in a way, whereas this is not photorealistic, but really, really pretty. It's a florally green fig, I think. Okay, the next one is a recent acquisition, one that I have been wanting for ages and ages and ages. And for some reason, I just never picked it up. Finally, finally, I picked it up. It is Le Herble uh, by Guerlain. And this is, I, I don't really know what to say about this yet because I'm not super familiar with it. I mean, I'm familiar with it in the sense of I have um, obviously smelled it in store several times and have wanted to buy it. To me, this is quite um, woody and spicy and a bit balsamic. Um, I feel like it's kind of resiny a little bit, but it's quite, when you spritz it on, it's not as resiny. I guess I picked that up from smelling it out of the bottle, but it's actually quite floral um, and powdery and it's just really beautiful. So the next one is also a bottle that I didn't purchase. This is a, um, a bottle that was gifted to me by my friend Emma. And this is called, um, this is by a company called Wick & Co. It's an Australian perfumery, a perfume house. And, and it's called Mervelo, I think that's how you say it. This is a rose iris scent and it's really pretty. The, the iris in here is, so it's quite powdery, as you would imagine. The rose is very soft. Everything in this fragrance is really soft, actually. You just get the impression that you are immersed in a very dispersed cloud. Not a too puffy cloud, but a very dispersed veil of cloud. <laughs> and so, yeah, the iris is very soft. Um, it's very clean smelling, it's not buttery, it's more airy and it is a really pretty fragrance. I can't tell you how it performs or anything like that. I haven't worn it enough. I think I've literally just spritzed it on when I got the bottle and then I haven't really worn it since. But I will be wearing it more in spring. So I look forward to that and being able to do a full review on it. It is really quite something, diff very quite different to any other iris fragrance I have, um, or rose fragrance for that matter, that I have in my collection. So I'm really looking forward to getting to know this one a little bit better. So that's it. I have come to the end of my 10 spring fragrances that I must wear in spring 2020. That's a really long title. I'm going to have to fix that. Thank you for being here as always. Really enjoying having you here. Really enjoying interacting with you all. Hope you all are doing very well. And if you are in lockdown, I hope you're staying safe and sane. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Okay, bye.